The Continental from the world of John Wick has finally been released on Peacock and we got a chance to see the first episode of this spin-off in the John Wick franchise. Episode 1 goes into the early origins of Winston in New York and his growing struggles with both the famous hotel and the relationship with his brother Frankie. It's mostly a solid start to the spin-off series, offering a more plot-heavy approach to this franchise while keeping the stylish action and characters that we are used to seeing. And I think going into episode 2, it definitely promises a lot more of the latter. In this review, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the Continental Episode 1, discussing my overall impression of the first John Wick spin-off. There will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, then I would recommend checking it out before watching my video. Before I get into it though, if you want to see more videos on the Continental series and any other John Wick related projects, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating subscribing to the channel and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's dive into my review of The Continental Episode 1. So the first episode of The Continental has been released online and for the most part, it's a great first dive into the expanding John Wick universe. This is the first spin-off and the first time this franchise has taken on a TV show, so there were of course some initial concerns over how they would continue this world on TV and yet make it stand on its own too. If you remember, I loved John Wick Chapter 4 and currently, it's my second favourite favourite movie of the year, only behind Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. So I had high hopes for this series, and again, I came out of episode 1 liking a lot of what I saw. Thanks to each episode's length, it feels like watching the start of a movie trilogy on a weekly schedule and not a TV show. I like this approach, as too often today, especially with the Disney Plus shows, the running time is so short that you feel like you barely even touch the world that's on screen and also characters get limited development. While The Continental isn't the greatest show for character development, you definitely examine the issues that they face a lot more and so far it's helping me to really attach to what's going on. With this first instalment it also helps with the emotional attachment, especially when it comes to everything going on with Winston and his brother. And that's the thing about The Continental. While it has all the stylish attributes of the John Wick movies, it has a surprisingly greater focus on the plot in episode 1 and that results in both the good and bad. Starting with that plot, the prequel series is set decades before John Wick went inside the assassin-based hotel. The three-part miniseries focuses on the origins of the iconic hotel owner and ally of John Wick, Winston Scott, who is of course played in the film series by Ian McShane. Set in a seedy 1970s New York City, the young Winston Scott, now portrayed by Colin Woodell, is forcefully brought to New York by the Continental's current manager Cormac, played by Mel Gibson. As seen in the opening of episode 1, Winston's brother Frankie steals a device which is crucial to the hotel and its assassin's illegal operations. The loss of that device puts Cormac in a state of anger yet also worry and his superiors on the high table, which includes a younger mask-wearing adjudicator, don't accept mistakes of this level. We learn that Winston had tried leaving the assassin underworld before, but now he's forced to step in because his brother is in a lot of trouble. He does get help from his uncle Charlie, dojo owner, siblings Lou and Miles, and his sister-in-law Yen. And all of this is built around the relationship between Winston and Frankie, eventually becoming the emotional driving force. Two brothers are sent on the wrong path, and years after Frankie is sent to jail, Winston finds him and convinces him that he wants to help and repair the bonds that were broken. Broken. Just like Winston wants to protect his brother, Frankie does the things he does because he wants to keep Winston away from this way of life. But that didn't really work and something that also doesn't go to plan is keeping Frankie alive. He sacrificed himself and gave the silent assassins the device they tried to take back, but once back
back at the hotel, they open it and realize that Frankie had given them a dud, in turn meaning he sacrificed himself so that Winston and Yang could escape with the real thing. In the end, it's clear that Winston has vowed to take revenge against the Continental, its manager Cormac, and the high table itself, showing that while you might have internal problems with family, you can stand up for them regardless. So with the plot set in motion, it sets up an eventful second episode with more revenge and action. And coming to that action, just from what I've seen in episode 1, the series offers the same violent escapism that made John Wick so popular to begin with. We get well choreographed action and fight sequences, and really creative death scenes that show you can always do things in a more exciting way on screen, no matter how much action had come before. One of the biggest questions going into the series was if this show could maintain John Wick's tradition of stylish, complex, and perfectly choreographed action. I'm happy to say that from the very beginning, the show delivers on that, as in the opening moments, Frankie shoots his way out of continental grounds in a way that brings us right back into this world. Not only is this scene creative, enjoyable, and brings that John Wick swagger, but it also shows us contextually that Wick wasn't the only person to break the hotel rule, that no violent business is to be conducted on the grounds. This opening action scene isn't the only impressive sequence though, as throughout the episode we get more creative moments, like when Winston fights off more Continental Guards in London, him and his brother try to escape with the device, or the interrogation scene with a younger adjudicator getting her high table guard to get more info from Frankie's heist accomplice. Although the younger version of her character from John Wick 3 is only in the episode for a few minutes, she completely steals the show, bringing a familiar presence, and I can't wait to see more of her in the episodes to come. The same goes for a young Sharon, who plays the character with a similar sensibility, and further interests me in seeing how he and Winston build their relationship further. Colin Woodell does a great job of playing the younger version of Winston, Mel Gibson's performance as the central villain is appropriately ruthless, and the small look at the silent assassin twins at the end brings a new wave of eccentric characters to the small screen. As a whole, it combines stylish action with a more plot-focused endeavour, helping in laying out a more independent crime series that is still set in the same universe. While there were many positives, both in action and plot, I will say that there were also a few things that do get me slightly concerned going forward. In particular, some of the dialogue did feel a bit too one note at times, and clunky when it came to certain characters. While I like Mel Gibson's character, his dialogue in an opening scene felt a bit underwritten and too cheesy. Yes, the John Wick films didn't have the greatest dialogue, but they focused on what worked in the action, and kept dialogue to a minimum. Here there are a lot more dialogue scenes, and while it works in particular moments, in others it does feel like it could have been done a bit better. Another thing that stayed on my mind was that maybe the Continental is too ambitious with the sheer number of characters and story threads it introduced and interweaved in episode 1. There is a lot happening on screen, and I'm hoping that as we go along this will all come together and feel much more streamlined. And to be honest, the ending does suggest that, with Winston posing the idea of revenge, reflecting what we saw in the films from the perspective of John Wick. I will say that The Continental seems to know its audience of action cinema very well, and this series especially attracts those who grew up watching 80s action cinema. It does that well with the added stylish thrills, and at the same time, we experience a storyline with much less filler. So overall, episode 1 of The Continental has an added emotional presence that links back to the very first moments in the original John Wick, and it sets up a dangerous plot going forward as Winston tries to seek revenge and take his place as the owner of the hotel. It set this up well and promises a familiar landscape in the episodes to come, one with more characters, more locations, and more creative action. That could result in either a good or bad show 
show, but right now, the board is definitely set up well for an entertaining series, one that packs plenty of meat into its free episodes. Yes, I wouldn't put it on the level of, say, the John Wick films when it comes to action or the way it presents its character elements, but with this being an origin for the hotel and Winston's likely takeover, it did seduce me enough. So I'm looking forward to the road ahead, and I'm also looking forward to what goes down in the remaining episodes of this series. But that was my review of The Continental Episode 1. I'm giving it a rating of 7.5 out of 10. But to those who have seen the first episode of the John Wick spin-off series, what are your thoughts on all the events that went down, and what do you think will happen in Episode 2? Let me know down below in the comment section. For more on The Continental and uploads on future projects in the John Wick franchise, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex and as always, make some noise.